Hi everybody, Joe Fisher, Manscrew Brewing here. I just hooked up my seven barrel system from Stout Tanks and Kettles with the uh, Brumation electronic controls. So I thought I'd walk everybody through a quick water test, or maybe not so quick, but I'll walk you through it and uh, that way you can see how everything works. All right, let's take a walk inside. It's all gonna start with the hot liquor tank. I'm gonna get good shots of all these fittings so that everybody can see what I'm doing. And we'll talk about them all in a few minutes. I've got some water in here. You can see the level in the sight glass. That little buzzing is just um, an electronic interlock that prevents me from opening this door if there's power because there's a 200 amp service three phase coming in and that'll do some damage if I stick my hands in there. So this is what we're looking at. This is the main screen. You can see this little green light tells me that there's enough water in the hot liquor tank to turn the heaters on. So what we'll do is set the temperature that we want and it's already set to 100 so that's what we're going to do just for this test and just hit the button. Oops, hit it harder. So now the temperature's come up. Our next order of business is to turn on this water pump here. And what that'll do is it'll draw the hot water off the bottom and recirculate it back into the hot liquor tank. So it'll take the water through this orange hose here, which runs over to this pump. And we'll see what all that fancy stuff on top of it does later. And then that gets pumped to this tangential inlet which was, is going to create a whirlpool inside and that will help keep the temperatures even and prevent any cold spots or hot spots. So the next order of business now is to get our strike water into the mash tun, which is over here. So in order to do that, that's where this cute little gizmo on top comes in. This thing is an electronic valve. So when we press the right button, that valve switches and pumps water into the mash tun instead. So you can see that the temperature has come down a bit. That's because we're doing that whirlpool and it's all the temperatures are settling, so there must have been cold water on top. So now that we're pulling the hot water off the bottom and recirculating it, it's evening out the temperatures. So what we're going to do is tap on how much strike water we want. So let's say, I don't know, let's say 50 gallons. All right. So now we're going to say, okay, we're, we're going to assume the temperature has stabilized. I'm just going to turn the heaters off just for demo purposes. And we start the strike. So what's happening now is this little pump is, or the valve is switching to pump through this flow meter. And it's going to pump through the flow meter and out that fitting inside the mesh tongue in just a moment. over here you can see that we're pumping water so you'll notice that this light just went off there's a float switch inside of the hot liquor tank at the same height as the heating elements so that if there's not enough water to cover the elements, you can't turn the heater on. And that prevents the elements from burning out because you can't run them dry. All right, you can see we're almost there. We've got five gallons to go. Go back over here, see what it looks like. Hey, water. There we go. The valve is shut off. And the pump automatically goes back to recirculating. 
you can hear the water circulating through here. In fact, I'll give you a little look. So you can see that float switch on the right-hand side of your image here. You can see how it's kind of like in the down position. That means there's not enough water. And you can see that the elements are out of water. So you would not want to run them like that or you bring them out. But if you take a quick look into the boil kettle, you'll see pretty much the same arrangement in there. Okay, so now we've mashed in. And this is a RIMS system. You can see this, this is the RIMS tube over here, recirculating inductive mash system, I think. Basically what it does is it pulls the wort off the bottom of the mash tun, runs it through this tube which has a heating element in it, and then back into the mash tun. So unfortunately, I'm missing a couple of clamps. So normally the heating tube goes here, and instead, right now, we've just got, I've just got a valve here. So what would normally happen is we would turn on the work pump after opening the correct valves. So let's make sure we do that. So let's open this bottom valve. So this would allow the work to come out. You can hear the air purge out of the line into the pump. And the pump would normally go through the, imagine there's a rims tube here and then be put back in to the kettle. There should be a hose attached here. I don't have it now just for testing purposes. So I'm just gonna open this valve a little bit and we're gonna turn on the work pump. So what would normally be happening is whatever temperature I set the mash to, the rims tube will automatically heat this liquid up to that temperature. So if I want 156 degree mash, 156 degree work is coming out of here. You can adjust it up or down a little bit to compensate for losses in the lines and stuff, and that'll just be an experimental process. So you can imagine we'll be doing this for an hour. So, the next step now is to sparge. So now, if I want, I can mash out. Like if I want to mash out, you know, at 190 degrees, I can set 190 degrees or whatever and then run that pump a little longer. So the next step is to sparge. And this is something I haven't done yet, so we're all gonna experience this fun and excitement together. So basically, when we're sparging, we're gonna be doing two things at the same time. We're gonna be drawing wort off the bottom of the mash tun and putting it in the boil kettle. And we're also gonna be drawing water out the bottom of the hot liquor tank onto the top of the mash tun. And the idea is to be drawing the water out or drawing the wort out at the same rate you're putting water in so you keep roughly the same height of the grain bed, or the same height of water over the grain bed. So you can see each of these pumps has a percentage of how fast you can run them. They're both set to 50%, so it should happen samey samey. So let's take a look. Let's open some valves, make sure we've got all the correct valves going. So this guy's open. This is going to go to the sparge the wort sparge pump. These are peristaltic pumps instead of centrifugal. I'll let you go to Wikipedia and figure out why. And we also want to open this valve, which goes to the water sparge. So, we also, one final valve to open. This is the boil kettle. And this is where the water is going to go in. Uh, the wort, rather. I keep saying water, I'm sorry. This is where the wort is going to go in. So, let's get started. First step, let's turn on the wort pump to start things moving into the kettle. That's a nice soft start. Climb up here and we can see if that's happening. So just imagine that's not clear. <laughs> that would be work coming from the mash tun. So at the same time, we're going to turn on our sparge pump.
and that's going to be gently raining clean water back on top of our mash. And it should be raining the clean water at the same rate we're pulling the sweet wort off the bottom. And now we just wait for this to happen. This will probably take an hour or so. So I'm not going to make you all sit around and watch it. So I'll be right back. Okay, we finished our sparge. And now we've got all of our delicious sweet wort in the kettle. And we need to start boiling it. So what we're going to do is we're going to start out with full power. We're going to set the heater output to 100. And you can see our little green light is on. That means that there's enough water or wort in there to turn on the elements. So we turn the elements on and things get heating. Pretty neat, right? So we would do that until a boil happens and then do our normal boil for 60 or 90 minutes. Now when we're done, we're going to want to do a whirlpool. So that's where this adorable little wheeled pump comes in. It's going to draw the beer off the bottom or the wort off the bottom and then pump it back into this tangential input. So. On. So we can adjust the intensity of the whirlpool. It's a fully adjustable motor. Obviously, normally there'd be a lot more liquid in here, but this is just for testing. I don't want to waste too much water. And that's it. Once it's all done, Then we just hook the pump up to the wort chiller. And from the heat exchanger, we go to one of our conical fermenters. And then from the conical fermenter, it'll go into the bright tank. And then from the bright tank, it'll go into the kegs, which are gonna get washed over there at that station. And that's it, thanks for coming by. Hope to see you soon.